The alpha versions of Generate Blocks 1.9 and Generate Blocks Pro 1.7 were both released yesterday, and already I've seen some confusion over the Block Styles panel and the Global Styles panel. There are some key differences here, so in this video, I'm gonna try to explain the differences between the two and when you should be using one over the other. If that sounds like it'd be helpful for you, then stick around and let's get started. As soon as you add a Generate Blocks block to your page here, you'll be greeted with the Block Styles panel. This is the typical panel you're used to seeing, and other than being able to add a class here, I don't believe anything in this release has changed, so you still have all your same controls for layout and sizing and spacing. However, when you add a class to an element and hit create, and start with a new style, you're gonna be taken to this new panel, which is the Global Styles panel, and it can be confusing because it looks fairly similar, but it actually has a whole different set of controls. Here you'll notice things like in display, you have the ability to add CSS grid, or down here in the effects panels, we have a completely new way of working. This new global styles panel has been completely recreated from scratch, and it's actually quite a bit more powerful than the block styles pattern. So why are there two different style panels now? Well, eventually I think they're gonna take this global styles panel and take all of these controls and migrate them back over into the block styles pattern. My guess is they wanted to keep some familiarity here as they're making some pretty big changes to generate blocks. And this gives them a little leeway to work out some of the kinks inside the global styles panel. So when they migrate it over to the block styles panel, everything should be in tip top shape and ready to go. If you find yourself looking for something here in this panel and you're not able to find it, chances are you're looking at the block style panel and not the global styles panel. To get to that, you just need to add a class or edit a class that's already been added to your block. And once you click on that or add that, you'll be taken to the global styles panel where you have full control over everything. So the next question you probably have is when you should be styling something in the block styles panel versus using the global styles panel. The answer to that is a bit nuanced and I think the more you use it, the more intuitive it will be. But generally speaking, you're gonna to wanna to use the block styles panel if you're making a one-off change that's only affecting the single element you're selected on right now and you don't want it to affect anything else on your website. Most of the time when you're making style changes to your website, you're actually creating reusable components that you're gonna use throughout all the pages on your site. In those cases, you really wanna be using a class on the global styles panel. This gives you the ability to control the style of your elements site-wide, which really makes your website easier to maintain over time. Now, there are gonna be times when you use a mixture of global and local styles. Let's jump in and take a look at one of those examples here. Here in this layout, I've added a button to my page and I've done all the styling for that button here on the global styles panel with this class I came up with called button hyphen primary. I wanna make sure that the spacing inside of my button, the background colors, and even the hover effects are the same on every primary button I use across my website. So I need to do all of those things here inside the global styles panel. But as I look at this one particular layout, I think the even spacing between my headline, text, and button throws off this layout just a bit. What I'd prefer is to have some extra top margin on this button to space it further away from the paragraph. Now, I don't wanna do that for every button across my entire website, so I need to make this change to the block style. We'll click on our button again here, and we'll make sure we're not inside the class. One thing you're gonna notice here is when you're in the block styles panel and something has been changed to this element through a global style, you'll see an indicator here that says global, and then you'll see a little dot wherever there's global settings being applied. Now your block level styles will override the global styles. So if I wanted to, I could change the top padding of this to 50 and it's gonna override on just this singular button. But of course, I don't wanna do that here. What I actually wanna do is add about 64 pixels of top margin to this button. This fixes my layout issue, but it's not gonna affect every other button across my entire website. Like I said before, the more you use this new system, the more intuitive it's gonna become. Now, this was just a quick crash course on how it all works. There are lots of different decisions that can be made, and we're not even jumping into things like utility styles or adding multiple classes to a single element, which I'm sure we'll get to eventually here on this channel. Now, if you enjoyed this video today and it was helpful for you, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you wanna make sure to see my next video that comes out on Generate Blocks, go ahead and hit subscribe and we'll see you then.